Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Avada Live Builder Preferences. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Ok, let's begin. The Avada Live Builder has an intuitive and minimalistic workspace, but there are also a range of builder preferences to help you work in the specific way you want to. Let's look at the preferences in Avada Live, accessed on the Builder toolbar from the Preferences icon. The Preferences panel pops up, and here we can see a range of individual preferences to refine the Avada Live Builder interface. The first one is Builder Styling Mode. This much requested feature offers a light or a dark mode for the builder. If we turn that on, we can see the whole builder interface now uses the dark mode. The next preference is for the sidebar panel position. You can have the main sidebar to the left or the right. By default it's on the left, but if you prefer you can change it here. The next one is the element editing mode. By default you edit elements in a tab in the sidebar, but if you prefer you can change this to a dialog. I'll do just that and close the preferences. And now if I edit an element, we can see it's now a small dialog. This can be resized and repositioned around the screen as you like, so it's a very flexible approach. Automatically open element settings is the next one. You can always click the question mark to get a short description of the preference, and as it says here, you can choose if the settings should be opened automatically after adding an element. By default it's set to on, and this makes sense in most situations, but you have the option here if that doesn't suit your workflow. Enable keyboard shortcuts is next, and with Avada Live there is a range of keyboard shortcuts you can use to speed up your workflow. These are enabled by default, and so if I close the preferences, we can find these shortcuts under the support icon. Here you can see a range of both toggle and action hotkeys, covering a variety of settings and tasks. Ok, back to the preferences, and the next one is show option descriptions by default. If you set this to show, then all option descriptions will be visible without clicking the question mark including these in the preferences, but you will have to refresh the page to see this setting at work. Show tooltips is the next preference, and these are the descriptions that appear when you hover over individual container, column and element controls, and by default they are turned on. Enable sticky header and containers is next, and if preferred you can disable the sticky header while working in the builder. It will of course still be active on the front end, but you might want to not see it as you work and scroll in the builder. A similar preference is enable transparent header and absolute containers. Sometimes transparent headers can hinder access to the top container icons. It's easy enough to work around this by scrolling down and accessing the container that way, or by using the navigator to select the element. But alternatively you can just disable transparent headers and absolute containers in the builder interface here. The next preference is enable preview for filter options. These are the filter options you find in the extras tab of many elements and if you adjust these, you get a preview in the builder. There's also a preference to enable preview for transform options. These transform options can be applied to columns, and this preference gives you a choice to preview them in the builder, either always, when you are editing the column, or never. The default is set to editing. The next preference is show droppable areas while dragging. I'll just demonstrate this one. This is currently off, but if I turn it on, and then move back to the page, when I drag an element you can see all the places that you can drop it. The grey lines are all the places on the screen that I could drop this element, and the blue one shows when I'm right over a droppable area. If we leave this preference off, we can still drop the element in the same places, but we only see the blue line when we are over a droppable area. That's the way I like it. The next preference is called Sidebar Panel Overlay Mode. It's off by default, which means when I open the sidebar, the page contents automatically resize for the new screen area, so we are always seeing the full page. If however we change this preference to on, the sidebar then opens in an overlay mode, and the page content takes up the full width of the browser. The penultimate preference is called Option Subtabs, and here you can choose if Option Subtabs are expanded or collapsed. These are things like column background options or filter types. Ok, the last preference here is Enable Preview for Rendering Logic, this pretty much says what it does. So for example, if you were editing your header layout and you had two header containers, one for desktop and one for mobile, set using rendering logic, this preference when on would mean the builder would only show the relevant one. With it turned off, you would see all containers. The default is on, but they are called preferences for a good reason. 
And as such, there's no right or wrong options here, just a whole lot of choices with how you work in Avada Live. Okay, that's the Avada Live preferences. Try them out and decide how you like to work. Thanks for watching. This concludes our video on how to use the Avada Live Builder preferences. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.